So on Twitter, whenever another user interacts with your tweet, you get a notification because another user has uh, retweeted your tweet or replied to you or have liked your tweet or maybe they've mentioned you in one of their tweets or whenever another user has sent you a direct message. And to implement this uh, real-time notification, we can of course have the client poll the backend to ask for new notifications or messages. But this polling approach is really quite inefficient because most of the time you're not going to get anything and uh, when you've got lots and lots of concurrent users all polling at some frequency, it's going to create a lot of load for the backend unnecessarily. So it's much better instead to use a push-based approach when the backend would push an update to the frontend. So the backend will only push data to the frontend whenever there's actually something to be sent, like a notification or a direct message. And you can implement this using GraphQL subscriptions, which allows clients to subscribe to data change events on the backend. And AppSync supports subscriptions out of the box. And the way it is implemented in AppSync is that you will define a mutation operation in the top level mutation type to capture the updates that you want to push to the subscribers. And then you will define a top level subscription type and add the things that the clients are able to subscribe to. In this case, I want the clients to be able to subscribe to new posts that have been added. And I will need to connect the subscription to the relevant mutations. And when a client subscribes to this added post subscription, then every time I make an add post mutation, the resulting post object will be sent to the subscription and broadcasted to all the subscribers. What's more, you can also add arguments to the subscription operations. So it allows the subscribers to choose what event to subscribe to rather than having to re receive every single update. I can say only send me updates if a particular author has posted something or maybe only send me posts that are added in a certain year or a certain month, which allows a client to filter the events they want and only get the updates that they're looking for. And in this case, I may have multiple subscribers, each are interested in updates by a different author. And so when we make a add post mutation, then depends on the author, the subscription will only fire for maybe one of the subscribers because that's the only subscriber who's interested in posts by this author. So a good question to ask here is, well, where do this list of arguments come from? Because we can see that it's different from the list of arguments that we have on the mutation. So clearly it didn't come from there. Instead, the list of arguments are coming from the field that's on the post object that was returned by the mutation. So in this case, in order for us to have author, title, publish year and the publish month as arguments in the added post subscription, those fields need to exist in the post type. And that's an important lesson to understand about how AppSync subscriptions work in that the subscription arguments, they are matched against the mutation response fields and not the mutation arguments. So the way to visualize it is that when a publisher makes a mutation request, the AppSync API is going to return some response and that response object is then going to get filtered through all the subscriptions and matched against the arguments for those uh, subscriptions. So another good question would be, what happens then if we specify subscription arguments that don't exist on the mutation response type? Well, in that case, the subscription is not going to fire because it can't match those fields against the response from the mutation. And only the mutation response objects that are matched by the subscription arguments would then be captured by the subscription. So you may also be wondering, the mutation and the subscription have the same response types, but are these the same response objects? Meaning if the publisher didn't include certain fields on the mutation request, would those fields still be available for the subscriber? Unfortunately, the answer is no. The subscription response contains only the fields that were requested by the mutation in the first place. Everything else that are available on the type would be no. So as the publisher making the initial mutation request, I have to also be mindful in terms of the data points that the subscribers might need and ask for as much of data back as possible. So when they're matched by the subscription arguments and broadcasted to all the relevant subscribers, the subscribers have all the information they would hopefully need. 
Another thing that uh, you may have noticed is that in our type definition here, the response type for mutation and the subscription are the same, but for the mutation, the response is required, whereas for the subscription, the response is marked as optional. Now, I don't understand why this is the case, but in order for subscriptions to work, the response type must be optional. Otherwise, when you make a subscription request to AppSync, you're going to get back an error saying that you can't coerce a null object to a non-loadable field, which is not at all obvious uh, what the problem is. So please remember this. I've spent many hours debugging my subscriptions only for it to turn out that I have accidentally made a subscription response type required as opposed to optional. And lastly, subscription resolvers are also optional, but they're really useful in terms of providing authorization so that you can say, given this mutation to add a new mention and this uh, subscription to allow client to subscribe to events whenever a user has been mentioned, if we want to lock down the access so that a user can only subscribe to their own mentions, then we can add the resolver to this unmentioned subscription operation and in the request template, we'll validate the user ID of the authenticated user against the user ID that's been provided as argument here. And we'll see some examples of this in the next couple of lessons where we're gonna implement notifications for when a tweet has been liked, retweeted, replied, or when a user has been mentioned. And as we implement direct messaging, we're also gonna add the notification support for that as well. So plenty of things for us to go through. I will see you in the next lesson.